Yeah, certainly. Thanks very much. Yeah, in light of what's uh, happened in the news, and of course that investigation still underway, we thought we'd head to the SPC and talk about how to keep your pets safe and how to also tell if they are in distress. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching BT. You know, we all love the animals. I mean, I don't even have a pet, but the news obviously of this weekend, just a heartbreaking story, Kim. So we thought we'd make our way out here because we want to try to keep our animals safe. People thought they did maybe something right. Anyone out there who thinks, oh, I'm going to be gone for a second. I've left water, I've windows yeah. open. Yeah. Things happen, and that's what you have to remember. Say you stop by the store to go pick up some milk or something. You just run in. What happens then if there's a lineup? What happens if there's, you know, a breakdown of the machine? you got to wait. So every minute is a minute too long for that dog to be in a hot car. And so how can we tell also when an animal is in distress? Because when you look at some of the heat, even if you're out at the dog park or on a walk, yes. sometimes it can be uncomfortable for your animals as well. Yes. Well, you want to watch for that excessive panting, the, the loss of the motor coordinations, uh, vomiting, convulsions, anything like that where, where they're just not acting normal. Even, you know when they drool and the, the sal they salivate and it's just hanging down like that? It's just things like that. Look for that and then start thinking, okay, what's going on? What am I going to do? Now you also have a great resource on the website as well. Yes, we have a couple of uh, brochures. We have one you can you can print this off. Ten minutes to disaster, and and have those with you and put those uh, on display. Or we have another brochure that you can take with you to tell you what to, how to recognize heat stroke and then what to do in case you do come across a dog or your own dog is experiencing heat stroke. Well, it's all about keeping our loved ones safe, our four-legged animals, and of course, if you want to learn more about Zeus, who we've had as our our little companion here this morning, you can check out the BC website sbca.bc.ca. Yeah, and can you identify when an animal is in distress and what would you do if you saw one in distress? We've got those details coming up next live from the SPCA. Hey Darby, look at the camera. There you go. Yeah, with that heartbreaking story of course in the news it really brings to light the importance to be observant and to do the right thing. We already know not to leave your pets in the car. We've talked yes. about that. If someone sees what they believe to be an animal in distress, what should they do? Well, I would I first go over this go over the symptoms of, of what is a dog a dog in distress and make sure what the uh, are they panting uh, are they vomiting are they losing motor mo consciousness are the motor the motor skills off things like that. Uh, also, I would if you're not sure, I would, I would make or keep track of how long the car's been there. Like, like how if, long you, if you're a bystander, yeah, we're talking about, yeah. of course. Yeah. If if the dog has been there for five minutes, ten minutes, start watching um, and keep checking on the dog. Go to a nearby store and you might anything in the vicinity where you think the people might be and ask them to page the person in the vehicle. And then if you're really concerned, call our, our emergency hotline. Call the RCMP or the, the police. And there are ways that people can again identify what is uh, what are signs of distress. Of course, you've also got information on your website for people as well. Yes, yes, and we also have information on the symptoms and then what to do if you have a dog that's uh, in has experienced heat stroke. And one of the things too is to keep them nice and cool in the summer. Coming up in the next segment, perhaps we can talk about ways that you can keep your pet comfortable. Absolutely. We're talking not in cars. We're talking about even in the yard or yes. at the dog park. Uh, for more details, by the way, on this little guy who's been our companion for this segment. This is Darby. You can check out the SBCA website, sbca.bc.ca. Yeah, thanks very much. You know, and as the warm, as the weather gets warmer, how can you make sure that your pet is cool and happy? Also, how do I identify and treat heat stroke if you need to? Here's Rocco as we go to break. Stay with us. We'll be right back live from the SBCA. Yeah, you know, and for us this morning here at the SBC, of course, in light of what you've been talking about in the news, how people would react if this happened, let's not make it happen at all. Yes. Uh, we get hot when the weather starts to get hot. Animals, they got fur on top of it. Yes, yes, they do. And, and don't have a choice, really, in a lot of uh, where we put them, so... Yes. So we want to prevent heat stroke. There are great ways to keep your pets cool in the yard, out on the yes. walks. What, are, what kind of suggestions do you have? Well, some of the things you can do, is, like we do here in the shelter, is fill up the Kongs, put their food in, nice treats, uh, mix with their kibbles, and then freeze it. And then on a nice hot day, take it out in the yard, give it to them, and help, it'll help cool them down. Some other things you can do too is we like to freeze these rope toys, uh, or you take a bin like this, toss their favorite toys in there, and freeze it. Such so, a great idea. Yeah, so then you, you can take it out, <laughs> put it in the yard. Or here's another cool tr uh, trick too is take ice cube tray. Hey buddy. Put in some treats in there, freeze it, 
and again, put it out in their water bowl. Such but a great yeah. idea. Now, if, for instance, you recognize heat stroke or heat exhaustion from your pet, we've talked a little bit about some of the symptoms. I was surprised to know that ice cubes are not a great way to cool them down. No, no. If you're suspecting that they're, they're heat stroke, uh, you want to make sure you cool them down by, you know, cloth cool water, just uh, wiping them, cooling them down, give them some cool water to drink. Please. The ice cubes won't help them cool their core, so that's not good. You want to uh, get them into some shade, really uh, fan them. At what point should them? you take them to a, a, veter a veterinarian? If my, if my dog I suspected heat stroke, I would start cooling them and get them right to the vet. Okay. I really would. Let's talk about treats because you have some great treats here. Yes. Uh, there's also recent word uh, that some food out of China is causing issues for some dogs. Um, what's the best way to kind of make sure that you sort of know what your dog is, is getting? Well, I would uh, uh, first check the labels. I would talk to my veterinarian too if there is a recall. Find out what the latest recall is and what the risks are and, and what, what's, what's the name brand of treats that you have to be concerned about. Always make sure that your dog gets a nice, healthy, well-balanced uh, well diet and the treats included. We, we pick different ones. Uh, even if we are using things like hot dogs <laughs> or anything like that, we're making sure that they're handled properly, they're stored properly because you can, you can make your dog sick just from that. And if you have any questions, best to talk to your vet. Michelle, lots of great information from the SBC, this, this SBCA this morning. By the way, this is Rocco. If you want to learn more about Rocco, you can go to the website svca.bc.ca. Such Rocco, a good dog. So cute. Don, I've done that ice cube tray for years with Cooper and he absolutely loves it. There I am right now and you just took my tease. That's right on. We've got more pet health and pet safety tips coming up next on BT uh, live from the SBCA. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Exactly, and you know, we're trying to keep our pets safe. That's the most important thing. We really don't want to have to deal with situations that have happened uh, or that we came to light this last weekend. That's so, that's so true. We want to protect them. We want to care for them. We love our pets, so... We love our pets, so we want to keep them cool. So for anyone that's just joining us right now, what are the key uh, signs of distress of perhaps there being a heat stroke or heat exhaustion for your pet? So you want to look for that excessive panting, the drooling, uh, loss of motor coordination skills, uh, vomiting, convulsing, anything like that. Um, you know, changing color of their lips, turning red, and they may turn kind of bluish. So things like that where they're just um, they're just not okay. Now, if, if someone is walking around and they happen to see a dog that could potentially be in distress exhibiting those signs, what should they do? They want to be sure first. Uh, go go to one of the stores if they're parked in a, a parking lot with a, of a store. Go in and ask them to page somebody. Tell them their dog is not looking well. Contact the SBCA. Contact the RCMP or the police and do something. And there are signs of distress. Things that you can learn just by going to the SPCA website. It looks like Nelson wants Susie here. <laughs> Susie is just a lovely little dog. Yeah, it's a nice little Scottish Terrier, four years old. She's shaved down, so she looks a little differently. <laughs> she came in and she was so matted, so we had to kind of clean her up. Well, thank you so much for all the great work that you do. Uh, of course, uh, this story is not done there, Jody and Riaz. I'm sure that in the days to come, we will hear more about that case that we've been reading about in the news. But in the meantime, the SBCA does great work. For more details on all the dogs that we've sort of had in our segments this morning, you can check out sbca.bc.ca. Oh. <laughs> Showing your best side, aren't you, Susie? <laughs> <laughs>